As with all of my videos, content is created for educational and awareness purposes. Please follow the law and only conduct attacks with prior consent from the target. Hi, this is Vincent Yu from the Red Team at Science Security. It's been a while since my last video, which was on the USB Ninja Hid Injection Tool. Do check that out if you're interested in merging parts of the physical side of security with cyber. In this video, I'm here to share a brief demonstration into password uh, breach dumps that have been made public. There are password dumps that have been leaked onto the public domain that may have been obtained as part of malicious breaches, but that said, the information available is hugely useful to bad actors who are attempting to breach your organization's perimeter, or if you're using it as part of a, an attack simulation, it might actually help you improve your customer's security posture. First of all, the most important and famous site that we've all, as security professionals know about is haveibeenpwned.com by Troy Hunt. This website lets you quickly search for specific email addresses to determine whether an, a password has been leaked as part of a breach and which breach it was part of. Um, and it might give you a better idea of the time frame as to which password you were using back at that date in, in time. This is good enough for most of the public as it allows them to go back and change the password, you know, if, if it's been uh, leaked. Uh, but on an offensive security perspective, you really ideally want to have the password so that you can attempt logins to ac obtain access to an account. In the last quarter of 2017, a breach compilation dump was put into the public domain. I'm not sure whether you can still get this anymore, but there's a magnet link still that I found on Reddit somewhere, and this might still work. So do check it out and get the password dump if you're interested. So what are the uses? Well, password dumps in general uh, uh, went uh, went a bit too far ahead. Okay, so password dumps in general can be utilized to discover employee email addresses and email formats. So if you're attempting to um, perform a, uh, or if you're simulating a spear phishing campaign or activity against a customer, then you could potentially go ahead and grab um, these emails and you can better understand what their employee email format is. <laughs> and you might be able to actually use the emails if they're still active. A lot of these password dumps are quite dated, so given that, you know, people move on, they might no longer be in the organization anymore. It, it could be invalid and the emails might not exist. So definitely push those email addresses into a validation service or into, um, you know, username enumeration vulnerability type thing so that you can verify which emails are actually true and still valid on the enterprise. It's also useful for the actual attacks themselves if you're going to try and break into specific login portals. If a user hasn't changed the password or if they have been reusing the same password for the past 10 years, then you may still be able to log in into their account. The password of trying, the, like the, pass, the process of trying the breached credentials against many services is known as credential stuffing. You might also be able to um, determine some password patterns. So for example, if a user has changed the password, you may be still able to perform some analysis to predict what their current password is. If for example, you found that the password back in 2011 was winter 2011 as part of the breach, you could potentially try spring 2019 around February time to see if they've kept that same pattern for the past eight years. Another use in password is in password cracking. We've always had word lists such as RockU. RockU is great, but it's almost been a decade since it was released and password cracking has advanced a lot since then. There's a great piece of work done by uh, Berserko on GitHub, which is a compilation of probable word lists. So what are these probable word lists? Okay, so I think uh, what he did was order all of the publicly found real passwords from public dumps and order it by the, um, the probability or occurrence of a password. 
So a lot of users might have the same password, but depending on who, you know what the most popular password is, he's ordered that into popularity and then basically made it so that when you're cracking passwords, you're always using the most popular ones and the most likely ones first before the less likely ones. That way it lets you increase your, um, um, decrease rather, like decrease your cracking times and increase your um, efficiency, essentially. <coughs> Uh, also, that way, when you're cracking, you're trying the most likely combinations first. Combine this with some rule sets, and you've got a solid attempt going. I found that this sort of data is also useful in investigations, etc. So uh, people tend to reuse passwords. If there's a uniquely identifiable email address, alias, or uh, ID, or a uniquely identifiable password, so that might be quite unique. Um, like no one else is using, then you could use it to identify this person and find additional aliases or email addresses that might be sharing that same piece of information. So searching through the local database dump takes a long time. <clears throat> so the one that we've downloaded, the, the one with um, all of the passwords, the breach compilation, it can take a really long time to search through um, a dump on your machine. So let's say if you were to just use the grep-ir command, recursive grep, um, with like the at domain.com to find it for a specific organization, it can take a long time to search through. Um, at least on my machine anyways. There's been many researchers who have released blog posts on how they're optimizing their own search speeds, mainly through the use of um, a log and data ingestion platform such as um, Splunk or the Elk stack. Elastic search, um, etc., um, or um, AWS's um, so Amazon Web Services Athena service. Um, so AWS's Athena service provides blazing fast search speeds, but at a small premium. I'll go over this in another video if there's interest. Uh, but in this video, we'll do a quick demo on using the local database and using PwnD PwnDB, um, one that's. Uh, found on the, the Tor network. So PwnDB is on the Tor network and it's made searches quite fast. It's a service provided free by, um, I don't know, some uh, some kind soul outlet. Um, he's ov obviously um, accepting Bitcoin donations if anyone's interested. But um, yeah, I'm not asking you to donate. It's uh, It's quite a it's a it's a useful website nevertheless and if you if you find use for it then feel free to donate um but yeah let's do the quick demo now and we'll show you how it works so i've got this breach compilation dump here now if i type this grep command up here so i'm gonna just search for here i want all the passwords for at uber.com that have been leaked in the past right so i can submit that search and it'll, and it'll basically just do a grep through the local database on my machine. Uh, no, not the database, the local data store. So what we can see here is there's uber.com, there's uber.com.br. So this is even great for finding other subdomains that, uh, other domains that they might have or subdomains that they might be using for email. And you can also see there's um, some username, so there's some names, so there's like uh, Arachna Ashar. Um, so let's separate it by a dot, so that's probably a first name dot last name, so probably first name Arachna and then last name Asha. But then you also see some other ones like Ashley and uh, Alex. So organizations mature and they might change their um, email formats as time goes on. As they grow, they might run out of um, email email um, names that they can have, so they might start having stuff like Austin 9, number 9 because there's eight other Austins in the organization. There might even be more. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite useful for that sort of thing. There's a whole bunch of passwords in here. I'm gonna just stop it at this point because it's gonna take a long time to run through. But you get the, get the idea. There's a lot of uber.com, there's a lot of uber.com.br domains here, and it can take a long time to search through. You can output this to a file and then do some formatting and then you can use it for credential stuff. Uh, so yeah, always do this with uh, legal consent. So let's say this is uber.com here and you're testing it against uber services They do have a bug bounty program, which is why I'm using them as an example uh, in this video for um, the educational um, You know sort of purposes, but 
yeah, definitely make sure you've got consent from the target before you do any type um, type of like, active activity. So the other service I wanted to go through was PwnDB. So if you're connected to the Tor network, you can actually go on PwnDB. So if you go to this Onion URL, what it will do is it will it takes a little bit of time because it is Tor at the end of the day. Okay, but when it's connected, you can search by the, the identifier or the email domain. And you can also use wildcards as well, which is quite useful. Or you can even search using the password that you're interested in. So here I'm gonna put in uber.com again. This is gonna do an exact match on uber.com's domain. And if I click email, what it will do is I'll have loads of these. So you saw before there's this too fast for love as well. And it reappears here because they're using a similar database. So that's really useful. But if I'm interested in whether this too fast for love at uber.com person has any other aliases, what I can do is this looks like a pretty unique password. This does as well. This does as well. But let's just take this one for now and give it a shot. So if we paste that in here and click password, or do it will search it by password, and you can see that these are the only two accounts with this password. But if we go back and try a different one, let's try, I don't know, let's find a different, a more um, unique looking password. Hmm. Yeah, some of these aren't that unique. They're pretty weak, to be honest, but sometimes you do get, get like a, a relatively stronger password that's been leaked, which can be quite a useful um, identifier. Oh, here it's only giving me 78. Maybe that's all there is, but there might be more. But nevertheless, let me let me go and grab another one. Let's try Tidnab87. So we paste that in here. Oh, he's the only person, okay. Let's try let's try this one. Maybe maybe this one. Yeah, and you can see like he's actually got a Yandex.ru account as well as his Uber account. So yeah, that lets you then find a different account. But if the ID was actually different, then you'd have a new ID that had the same password that could then be joined back to this person. So it's useful for this type of investigative type activity as well to find new aliases. And then you can do another search on that alias to see whether there's other accounts with that same alias. So let's take, I'll take this alias here. I'll check through the email and I can see that these are the only two accounts that he has with that password. So that's quite useful from that perspective and it is quite fast. As you can see, the execution time has only been you know, a, a fraction of a second. So this is blitzing fast. This one took half a second as compared to on my own machine. So obviously there's a lot of optimization going on here and he's done a really good job. And yeah, it's a pretty good service. I'm gonna go into creating one in Athena. Uh, uh, so uh, Amazon Web Services Athena service, which basically reduces times down a lot and you can have your own private instance you can create your own web interface as well to search for it and it could be good for some in-house teams out there and another thing that i did was so let's say if i grab this uber.com if i scroll all the way to the bottom and then i just copy all of this in then what i can do is if i paste it into a pwndb.txt here i created this script uh, not this one, this script, which basically just reads it in and then it splits it and then it basically converts it. So if I do type pwndb convert.py and then doing pwndb.txt, what it would do is it will read in that information. Oh, I think I took the wrong script. One second. Okay, so I'm back. I just went into a batch prompt and it seemed to fix everything. So I'm just gonna do a Python on that script again. And then what it will do is it would have take, taken that format and it would have formatted it into like a, a combo list now, essentially, that you can use for um, testing against Uber if, you, if Uber were a customer, for example. Obviously some passwords like heck here might be fake and they might no longer exist. Um, so yeah, you, you might be able to apply some sort of um, Password complexity rules to this to make sure you get some decent passwords before you try it against like Active Directory enabled services, authentication services, etc. So definitely, um, yeah. So this is the script, and I'll I'll post this script onto GitHub as well, and there'll be a link at the bottom of the video. So yeah, that might be a useful thing to have as well if you're going to format this list. Okay, back to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so 
Yeah, so in terms of the defender's perspective, you might you could take a breach credential set for your organization and make sure that the account passwords have changed and are not actively being used. So I have actually come across some clients that do have passwords that still work because some of their employees might still be using a password from 10 years ago. So that type of thing. And it's definitely worth checking. I mean, their passwords might have been quite strong, might have been eight randomized characters or, well, it's not strong anymore, but... Um, it, right, it might be like 10 randomized characters even and you know it's it's not based off a word and it might be difficult for a word list to crack but given like it's in the public breach and it's been cracked in the past by someone else then you know that password they might have felt oh this is pretty secure I'm just going to keep using it for 10 years and then what happens is someone might find it and use it to breach your, your enterprise your organization so it's definitely worth going through some of these and making sure that they don't work against your own portals and do like a mini password spray credential stuff type of attack against your organization just to make sure there's no um, uh, low hanging fruit, let's say, in your organization so that you won't get breached uh, by, by a malicious actor trying to do this type of activity. So thanks for watching this video and I hope that you've learned something new. Follow me on Twitter at VY Security if you're interested in seeing what else I have to post throughout 2019. Happy hacking and have a, a happy new year as well.